Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and today's Sekiro Shadows Die Twice video guide we are going to be continuing with our detailed walkthrough. Now in the last episode we went back to Ashina Castle and we also went back to Hidata Estate and finally got both of the key items that we needed to do both of the hidden or secret endings. Uh, also at the top of uh, the Ashina Castle, we also spoke to Owl, and if we would have chose to side with Owl, we would have also got the bad ending or the shooter ending. So all three of the other endings are now available to us once we finish the game, whichever one we want. So we just fitted the last two prosthetic tools in the game, so now we have all ten. And the place we would like to head now is Fountainhead Palace. But before we go to Fountainhead Palace, we are going to be doing a few little things. So the first thing we're going to do is come to Ashina Depth. And we are going to go to the Hidden Forest Idol. There's actually two things we want to do in the Hidden Forest Idol. One of the things we could have done uh, before. But we didn't feel confident enough to kill the Headless. That's what we're going to do. And the other thing we are going to do is kill another two hidden bosses actually. So from here, the first thing we want to do is actually grapple back across behind us. Uh, watch out for these new phantoms that weren't there before. And down at the bottom of this hole, we are going to come across this ape. As in the ape, it's the same ape that we... Uh, also tried to kill before this is the guardian ape but round number two and uh, now this guy can be incredibly hard um, for one reason we'll see in a second uh, at the start it will literally be the second phase as like exactly the same as the second phase when we were fighting him in uh, his original uh, boss battle so he shouldn't be too hard anyway the uh, first phase which is this phase, but second phase can get a bit more tricky. Shouldn't be too bad. But we'll talk about that in a second. So there's first phase gone. Now you will need the mortal blade if you want to completely uh, do this and get the trophy or achievement. But uh, basically what's going to happen is we are going to have to fight two um, guardian apes at the same time. Now this is pretty damn brutal. However, um, remember that the, basically we were fighting the first and second phase at the exact same time. Uh, obviously the, uh, the first phase one, or the normal one, can actually be killed very, very uh, easily just by using um, firecrackers. As you can see, he is already done for. So you don't really have to worry about it too much, plus we are very strong uh, compared to the last time we fought them. Here we just want to... We actually screwed that parry up, but um, we got another opportunity to go for this one. Uh oh, it was kind of a bit close for that. Surprised we didn't take any more damage. But yeah, as you can see, um, it's all about the firecrackers, because if, if you do try and fight exactly both of them at the exact same time, then yeah, it can be a nightmare. But uh, once you've got it down, it's okay. As you can see, a lot easier and a lot faster than actually the original Guardian Ape, I would say. Um, so what we're going to do is, since we do have the Mortal Blade, we aren't just going to leave him there. If you look closely, uh, by the way, we get two prayer beads from this because we did kill two of them, so that's really good. If you notice closely, he is actually still alive because technically he's got the Centipede and he is immortal. So we are going to use the Mortal Blade to finally finish him off for good. And we will, this will actually give us the trophy, we obviously already have it, so we're not going to get it. There's a pretty sad backstory um, behind the uh, Guardian Ape. And we also get our third and final Ninjutsu. That Ninjutsu basically gives us a buff every time we uh, use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to travel to uh, the same idol as before, because we do have something else we would like to do in this area. Now I'm not too sure if the other secret boss or mini boss I'm thinking about is actually available to us yet. I'm not 100% sure or do we have to kill the next boss. If, um, okay, yes it is. As soon as the Guardian Apes burrow, 
bonfire or idol goes offline that means we can actually um, fight the next secret boss which is going to be in the exact same place as the one we just fought here uh, this boss isn't like a unique boss or anything it is just going to be another Shichimen warrior however we are going to want to kill him because he is going to give us um, the third and final unique upgrade material that we've been looking for so um, let's go ahead and kill him plus this this item or the actual upgrade is actually really good for another boss later on so uh, we're gonna go in make sure you've got your divine confetti and your uh, pacifying agent for this very important watch out for those attacks to parry normally when he disappears he will pretty much always do the um, big blast I'm not actually sure where he is, he's kind of getting away with it. Watch out for that. Just spam away once you get the opportunity, that's pretty bad luck there. It's probably about time to use another pacifying agent. As soon as he's uh, got out of that phase, let's use another one and let's just make sure and use another divine confetti now we're doing it. Just run to the side whenever he does this. If you're too close, it will actually still hit you, so watch out. Try to do it again. It's a bit weird, to be honest. It can get really annoying if he keeps teleporting around like this. It can really get annoying. I'm not sure where he spawns. Well, I don't think he always spawns in the same place on this particular battle. Some, like There is some battle where he uh, just does keep teleporting to the exact same place, but this is not one of those battles. It's probably about time we use another um, pacifying agent because they really don't last too long. But he's dead anyway. That was not too bad. There we go. You can probably do this battle a bit earlier. But anyway, Malcontent's Ring. That is our third and final upgrade or unique upgrade material that we was looking for. So we've got Malcontent's Ring. We have the Phantom Kunai from uh, Anayama. And we have the Ember, which we got from Mibu Village. But we're not done here. We're actually going to go to the hidden forest idol one final time because there is a headless around here that we didn't take out when we originally came through here and I just want to clear everything up before um, you know th though this isn't going to be the final episode of the uh, walkthrough I just want to do everything we can at the moment uh, also I believe I did leave one item beside him which we'll pick up now this headless, I'm not sure, maybe it's just bad luck, but I actually find this headless to be the hardest, most difficult. I'm not sure, maybe I had really bad luck with it last time. I'm sure it's the aggressive one. Sure is the aggressive one, eh? Dispel him, there we go. Once we do that, it's not too bad. Uh, one more thing that we could have done is use the memory from the uh, monkey that we just killed the second time. I didn't do that, we should have probably done that. Okay, I think yeah, our pacifying agent is completely gone, so watch out for that. Always got to watch out for the pacifying agent, I believe that's like the most uh, common error while fighting these guys. Uh, we're dead, yep. It's kind of a nine because like I was kind of worried to parry them and obviously the only other option is to jump and obviously we couldn't dodge that by jumping. Our pacifying agent is out and we don't actually have any more. Oh, you, oh no wait. Is that going to terror me? That could terror me. No it didn't. Okay his grab attack doesn't terror. But we haven't got any uh it's like literally one, ha one hit away so it would be a bit annoying if he we died now to be honest. And we are going to die now, I can tell. Is he down? I'm not, I really, oh no, this is a disaster. <laughs> he should be dead, come on, there we go, Jesus Christ. That was a lot more intense than it should have been at the end. Uh, and that is our fourth headless, four out of five. And that's probably one of the better abilities. This is the one to go invisible, so it's great for stealth. Anyway, now that is done. I'm just trying to think uh, if we're missing anything. I don't think so. So we've got four of the five headless, which is basically what the only thing we can do right now. Um, we have done all the NPC side quests. Oh, uh, no, we haven't. We could uh, go back and sort out the red-eyed people, probably. That's pretty tough. I'm not sure if we're strong enough. But now we're here, we may as well go and try it, right? 
because uh, as far as Anayama's side quest, the only thing missing is once uh, the outskirts is on flames, but we can't do that part yet. And that's right next to the end. But yeah, um, let's go and sort out the... Uh, where are they? Should be in abandoned temple or abandoned dungeon. Remember the surgeon? Remember we said that him and his companion will be somewhere with red eyes and they're actually quite a tough battle. Well, we're going to go and sort them out right now, hopefully. They're pretty tough, like probably one of the harder kind of humanoid, kind of normal NPC kind of battles in the game, since they're both together. And it's not really worth it if you don't really want to, because all you get is like a, a red clump, two red clumps. One of them is kind of unique, though, so it's completely up to you. But yeah, they will be here. I'm not really sure if you can actually get a backstab on one of them. Maybe if we use um, the ability or a sugar. I'm not really sure. I've never I don't think I've ever tried. No, okay. I don't think this is going to work. Matter of fact, I think that guy's already seen us. <laughs> I'm not sure about the other one, though. Yeah, it seems. We are pretty strong. But like I said, they do huge damage as well. So. I'm not really sure which one. I've only ever done this battle once, so I'm not really sure what like our strats to use or who to go first. But just look at that damage they're doing to us. It's absolutely insane. They don't really have a cooldown for the... Uh... Oh, we're stuck on the boat. <laughs> stuck on the boat. I think this guy's probably the best. As you can see, his uh, posture is a lot weaker, I would say. But we're, we're going through those... Uh... We're going through those uh, gods really quickly, by the way. Yeah, I'd say the surgeon is definitely weakest. Once once one of them's on their own, it's not too bad. This guy basically gets like the moveset from a monk. Let me separate him like this, it's pretty good actually. Well, you know, or, or he could just two shot me. That's also an option. <laughs> just do not underestimate any of them. They're so strong. They are so strong. It's like half of my health in one little hit, and I got quite a lot of health in all fairness. No, 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 Calm down, matey boy. Jesus Christ, the damage these guys are doing to me is ridiculous. Let me get this guy before the other guy gets hit. Is it? The other guy's already hit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Divine Grass. And I literally live in it on the limit, wasting items like mad here. That guy's nearly done for. That guy should be done for. He's done for, but I saw away, really. Oh dear. Uh, they can't heal each other, so um, that's not a big issue. Yeah, that's one of them. A tiny bit of health back by uh, uh, getting the death blow. Now one of them, now this guy on his own, this guy is obviously the strongest of the two, but hopefully if, because it's on his own, unless he completely breaks that posture, which isn't impossible by the way, like you can see, like he is absolutely destroying our posture at the moment, and we're not doing much to his posture at all. This guy's pretty damn strong. No, you do not, matey boy. Can we do it? We're one hit away from dying. It's kind of annoying that I didn't get a revive back from uh, from the other guy. From killing him, because I thought we would have done. Uh, on the bright side, they don't respawn, so I think even if we die now, the other, the first one isn't going to respawn. That was a tough battle, that really was, like, on the limit. So yeah, we got like, Academic Red Lump, and it's just like more of a lore kind of item for the Surgeon side quest, but that would mark the complete end of the NPC side quest so yeah I think we've got everything out of the way now that's for sure uh, how much prayer beads only two we've got a memory we didn't use we should have probably used that before all of that that's the one we got from the headless ape and uh, yeah that's everything actually done if I'm not mistaken what I am going to quickly do is um, go to the temple and uh, sort out some upgrades because the uh, malcontents ring upgrade to get Malcontent's Whistle is actually an upgrade or an item I would actually like, one of the tools that I really would like because uh, it will actually help against uh, one of the bosses near the end, one of the secret bosses, really good. 
So we pro I don't think we'll be able to get it like right away here, but yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to work towards it. So what we want is this, I think. Is it this one? I'm pretty sure it's this one. Mm -hmm. So let's let's head towards that one. Is it malcontent's room? Yeah, malcontent. That's what we're looking for. Uh, so really, we just we just want more um, sen. So let, let's let's go and uh, pop a few bags or purses. Now we're here, you know. Let's not leave it any longer. Okay, that should be enough. Maybe not get it right now, but just get as close as possible. Uh, so what are we looking for? Okay, we need this and this, and now we need th this. Um, the lilac is actually really good against um, like the Shishimen warriors and uh, the any any like ghost type like headless and stuff. Specifically, the head uh, the Shishimen warriors because that will just block all like purple ghost attacks. So yeah, we can get Malcontent's Whistle, which is actually what I was looking for. And we just about made it, so that's perfect. Um, do we have any... I think we're only... No, okay. We're only missing, like, one... We're only missing, like, one thing. One seed. So we'll be getting that this episode. And it's time to finally continue. This episode is going to be really long, because we haven't even started the area, and... This area is massive, possibly the longest area in the game. So, 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 let's head to the depth. Let's go to the wedding cave door. Now, if you didn't do all the conversation and stuff with uh, Kudo at the top of uh, Ashina Castle after defeat an owl, uh, you may not be able to do this, so uh, just make sure you have. If not, you're going to have to go back there and uh, continue to speak to them. But, like we said, we do now have the item for the uh, purification ending, and we have the secret item for the return ending, and we can choose whichever ending we want right at the end of the game, including the normal ending, obviously. So we're going to come into here, and we are going to pray. And we kind of get abducted by some weird um, string guy that looks like it's came out of unraveled or something like that i'm going to skip the cutscene because it's quite a long one and uh, i don't think we really want to be sat around here forever but uh, yeah we get abducted by this massive string monster monster ally whatever and this is going to take us to fountainhead palace we're just going to top off here for a second and get this item which is pellets yep and come to the first um so the first idol here in Fountainhead, and we're actually going to fight a boss right away. And it's actually going to be the true monk. Now what we are going to do is we're going to actually equip a fistful of ash, or ten fistful of ash. We are going to wait until the final phase to use it. It's a bit of a cheese, but um, I thought I'd show it. Plus, uh, this is kind of like the... Um, you know, like the first phase is literally the exact same as the uh, as the uh, ghost version that we fought at the bottom of Mibu Village. So you should uh, know his moveset. Uh, obviously, as you can see, he has three phases and not just the one. But um, yeah, first phase shouldn't be much trouble for you. I'm not really sure if he's got more or less... Um, more or less uh, health or posture. It's really hard to tell because we do have more attack power and more everything, so it's probably natural that it seems easier. Here you want to get one or two shots in, but basically what it's going to do is going to um, just go invisible and convert into a load of shadows. And what I like to do is just do this, where you just uh, spin the camera around to the left hand side and just grapple. And you just want to watch the bridge and wait until he spawns again. There you go. You can see yeah, I think he's spawned. Nope. Sometimes it will look like he's spawning, but then he will um, disappear again. Make sure he spawns completely. There he is. Okay, he's back. I don't know why, how one of those hit us, but whatever. And yeah, the battle will continue the exact same as phase one. However, if you take too long, he will do the uh, ghost attack again. But uh, apart from that, he should be easy. Exact same strat. 
I don't know what that was. I kind of got a bit confused there. I didn't ex I kind of wasn't expecting to break his uh, attack, but we did and that kind of went horribly wrong. I, I kind of get him too aggressive because I'm scared that it will do the uh, shadow attack. Right, as soon as he hits third phase, what we're going to do is get a uh, fistful of ashes out. We're going to let him do the first attack, which is obviously always going to be the uh, spin attack. So we're going to let him do that and we're going to parry as much as we can. So once we've done that, we are going to fist four bash. One, two, fist four bash. One, two, fist four bash. One, two. You can sometimes get three hits in, but if you want to play it completely safe, just go for the, just go for two. Yeah. Uh, this is a really big cheese. I like I said, I'm not a big fan of this, but I just wanted to show it just in case a lot of people uh, do find this boss just a bit too much. It's a very, very easy cheese. Um, if you did free, you could probably get, like, it would, like you can probably kill him with the cheese. And if not, just use the um, firecrackers. And yeah, we we'll just finish him off with the mortal blade. And we are done. The first boss. We haven't even really got into the area yet. Memory and uh, the tally board. So the tally board actually makes the merchant sell more items and better items so for instance now we could go back and buy like infinite i think amount of divine confetti and stuff like that from certain merchants which is really good this place is absolutely stunning like it's beautiful this place and massive and a lot to do and quite difficult in general so let's begin shall we so um i'm going to like try and remember where like, I'm doing this without notes. I'm doing it off the top of my head. I just hope I remember everything. I'm literally trying to remember every single item in the area. So bear with me. So these enemies here, if they do get you with their status effect, um, you just pretty much say bye to yourself. It's almost as if it was an insta death thing. Uh, you'll t convert to an old man and basically unless you escape really far away or quite a lot of time or kill them, kill the one that actually did the status effect, uh, you're basically going to be uh, one-shotted by everything and you won't be able to revive so just watch out. Um, okay so let's get the items in order. So we got one of the items around to the left, there's going to be an item on this bridge with this Akami warrior. Uh, by the way do not do not dive into the deep water yet, okay, because you will get, like, insta-killed. Not insta-killed, but you'll get bombarded by a boss, a mini-boss that's on that tree, the massive Sakura tree. You can kind of see him from here, so just don't really do that. Uh, from here, we're going to watch out, because there are going to be a lot of uh, guys trying to screw with us. This area is possibly, like, really on this game, most of the areas, the, the tough guy is the boss. Uh, but this guy, this area is kind of the uh, kind of the exclusion, I would say. Like everything in this area is just so so um, dangerous. So, even these guys, like you can literally be like spamming them with a sword, and they still have time to jump and shoot you with a bow and arrow. Um, anyway, we're gonna come to the other side of this big building. Watch out for these guys. The only reason we're coming down here is for the uh, for the item in the building. Firecrackers are your best friend in this area, okay? So just always have them equipped. Oh no. Uh, where are we? Oh, alright, okay, there's one in there. I didn't even notice him. So if they see you and do this attack, that's the attack that's going to give you that status effect. I'm going to wait until he finishes. I completely forgot there was one in here. Okay, pick up that item. So we got an item from the first building and an item from that tree trunk or whatever that is there. One from the bridge, one from this building. Uh, there's going to be one up here on this roof. Um, and there's going to be a few in here. Watch out for these dogs. Um, let's just call them dogs. Uh, they do have a lightning attack that obviously we are in water. So if they hit you while you're in the water with that lightning attack, is going to be pretty damn uh, painful, let's just call it. So uh, what, just watch out for them. Let's pick up the items. And we'll stick to the left and go into this building. 
I'm just trying to think in the back of my head, like there, there's another area in some Dark Souls game where the, you're in water and if the lightning hits you it's a lot more powerful, but I just, I just cannot grasp which boss or which area it was. I'm not even sure if it's a boss. Oh dear. Kill these. They're really easy to kill, they're just like normal dogs practically. Like one shot them. But uh, you know, just just be careful. These guys are quite a bit more powerful than normal dogs. And these ones, even though they look like they're just dead or sleeping, they are actually alive, so make sure you get rid of them as soon as possible. Yeah. And these guys. And these guys. like normal dogs firecrackers will um, put them into a one shot state um, I don't know, do they actually kill them maybe they actually kill them maybe they even kill them I never realized that they actually die from firecrackers I just thought it took them into like a deadly state where you can just death blow them but okay better still okay so let's oh, that's not an item there's the item Pick that up. Um, there's nothing on these roofs. Uh, there could be a bad guy on the roof, but I don't think so. I can't remember. But there's definitely no items. Next idol. Here we go. So this is where the where the area starts to get real tough. We get, every time we're going to see more and more of those um, those guys that can practically insta kill you. So uh, you're going to watch out for them. Here's the first one. Uh, we actually have an NPC here, which is a bit weird and strange, but uh, this NPC will kind of just uh, warn us a bit about the uh, the enemies that do do this annoying status effect, let's just say. So first things first, we're going to... Uh, it's probably not the best strat. We're going to run around here. I didn't mean to go into the grassy area, sorry about that. I actually kind of thought I seen an item in the corner of my eye, but it wasn't. I remembered at the last minute that it wasn't. It was just an emblem. The item is over here. Still sticking to this side of the map. We are going to go into this building. Don't go straight after that guy. Make sure you don't get ambushed. Because if, if you start fighting that guy straight away, uh, you're going to get absolutely destroyed by that guy behind you. Pick up the yellow gunpowder. Now you can go after that guy. Because uh, if you're fighting this guy and that guy's looking at you, say goodbye. There we go. Pick this up. Eel liver. Uh, good against lightning. Right, so here, let's go around this building first. Oh, we could go like through the roof. There's nothing in the rooftops, but it is kind of a good vantage point to like take this guy out. That's not what was supposed to happen. But, um, yeah, you can take that guy out. Uh, but, you know, we're actually going to try and go around the back instead of going up there. Because this, uh, okay, I, I wasn't expecting these guys to be that close. I'm not going to lie. They're not normally that close. That was actually really scary. Uh, just make sure you do take out that guy first. Because uh, they're way more dangerous than these guys. Even though it doesn't probably look like it. But they're not, they're not actually doing too bad themselves, I think. Keep those firecrackers going and uh, they should be not too bad at all. Because they actually stun quite a lot with the firecrackers. And they don't have like no cooldown or anything like that, so you know it's a win-win thing. Okay, dokey. Right, um, now we did get that item. Uh, we're just going to go around the back and pick this item up. Now, uh, before we leave, we do need to continue to clear this area out. So what we're going to do is we're going to come around here and uh, here we're going to use a um, sugar to go invisible. And remember, if you don't have sugars, you can just use the uh, skill or the ability that we got from one of the headless. Let me take this guy out. Now, as fast as possible, we're going to go around here to kill this guy and that guy before he sees us. Really good strat with the invisibility. They don't really have time. And now we're going to run in here and obviously go for the red guy first. Now these, the, the guys with the um, the stick type weapons are quite dangerous. I'll just pick this item up. There's another item in there. I believe there's also a chest in there. 
like to do two shots. I don't know why that guy didn't get affected there. That was bullshit. I, I do like to do two slashes and then um, and then uh, firecrackers, or even one if you want to play extra safe. I cannot stress enough how um, how useful firecrackers are against these guys. Let's go in here, pick the item up, and like I said, uh, we have got another chest here. Can't really remember. I don't think it's anything that great. Yeah, okay, divine cross. Right. Um, we didn't pick. Did we pick that item up in the corner? Yeah, I think we picked everything up in this little area. Right now, here you want to be careful. What I'm gonna do is quickly go after this guy. That was even. That was risking it. Like still, that was almost death. And now stick to the wall to the right, and then come after this guy. Don't like stand in like the doorway where he can see you. Uh, remember these guys, if they... No, that was actually what I was going to say, but I kind of didn't realize what he was doing. Uh, these guys can be lightning reversaled. So uh, if they do a lightning attack, you can jump and uh, reverse the lightning. And also the other ones, the, the other ones just a double jump. You have to jump twice if you want to escape that. Right, now before heading to the idol, we're going to come to this little pond here. And we're going to dive down. And then quickly dive back up. And we're going to be inside this building. Now in here we're going to find a load of carp scales, which are nice. But more importantly, we're going to find... We are going to find... This. If it will let me pick it up, of course. Water of the Palace. Now... I think I mentioned it. We definitely talked to the NPC, but remember we said that somebody was um, looking for the water of the palace. I'm not sure if you guys remember. There was a strange NPC. Let's go and visit him right now just to get it over and done with. This is the final part of his kind of quest. So we are going to go to Ashina Depth and we are going to go to the Wedding Cave Door um, Idol. So we are going to talk to an NPC. I'm not sure if you guys remember. There was somebody drinking away in the final building um, of the Mivu village. The one that we could eavesdrop on and the one where we used the inverted trap door below the house. The one with all the enemies outside. We're going to go and talk to him and we're going to give him the uh, palace water. Because uh, that's kind of what he wants. I'm not sure if he knows he wants it, but he definitely wants it. So let's go in here. Talk to him again. And uh, talk to him again. Just keep talking until he says, Give water of the palace. Yeah, he'll give you Dragon Spring Sake. Now, um, what we want to do to get the proper reward from that guy, we are going to go to the, um, well, you know, any idol or, or just rest. I'm going to rest just in case it is rest, but I normally if you travel, rest, like it kind of counts as resting as well because it makes everything spawn and um, it will give you all your healing items back. But I'm going to rest just in case to not do two trips because that would be a waste of time. Once you've rested, or travelled, I guess, uh, we are going to go back and talk to him. Well, we're not actually really going to talk to him because he is now actually going to be converted into a Mist Noble himself. Which are the guys that we've just been f um, fighting, the, but the ones with the red kind of outfit on. So he is now going to be hostile. So uh, what we're going to do is actually kill him. And he is going to give us five scales, which is really good. Five treasure carp scales, and like I said, we are interested in treasure carp um, carp scales uh, because we do want a specific item uh, that we'll be doing a bit later on. Um, here, now it's really we're gonna, just going to go back to the um, Fountainhead Palace and continue where we left off, really, because uh, there's nothing else we want to do. We just really this episode is going to be a lot of cleaning up which we have been doing for the first half of this episode and uh, I just want to clean that up just you know I want to really make this a hundred percent uh, walkthrough so let's go back to that and uh, that's another NPC that has been completely cleaned up cleaned up um, 
I'm just trying to think if I've missed anything. Uh, for now, I don't think so, anyway. I'm 99% sure we haven't missed absolutely nothing in this playthrough uh, at the moment. Like I said, this isn't actually the last episode. We still have at least one or two more episodes that we'll be doing well, next. Anyway, so what we're going to do is before heading across the bridge, we're actually going to come this way because we're not done quite yet, this side of the bridge. Gonna be an item there. From here, we're actually gonna go up to the uh, roof. So this is actually really, really. This is actually the farm spot I used personally at the end of the game, um, using a Mivu balloon. You want to come from that idle grapple up here. You want to go around the roof. Um, death blow from above on the purple guy. Kill that guy, and then kill the guy on the way out. Rest, rinse, and repeat. Really, really good for Sen and for. Um, skill points and yeah, I was doing it obviously for skill points for the final trophy So uh, just a really that's like what the last thing I was really doing uh, For the uh, platinum trophy and So we are going to try and take these guys out. I probably you could um You could take a bit more of a, <laughs> a Stealthy approach to this that was definitely not the best approach like, To be honest I didn't expect him to do so much damage because there is there's a guy with a bow and arrow also destroying me. It's kind of a uh, kind of may have underestimated. He's still shooting at me. That guy's got some good aim. Let's try and get him around here. I don't think he wants it though. So we just guy's really starting to get annoying now. I'm not sure what kind of range they've got, but that's ridiculous. I really don't, oh my god. You can't really see, it's not like in Dark Souls 1 where the arrows kind of come at you at a real unrealistic kind of slow pace. On this it's just like, like proper real arrows. And plus they're so fast and they, they're, they're like infinite poise where you can't actually knock them down. And it's like real, that's the real problem. Because normally enemies like that you would uh, like just knock them down if you have. Now the real reason we came around here on the roof is actually to get a bit of a surprise attack on a mini boss. There he is. There he is. This is the Sakura Ball. And I, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get a surprise attack on him because it's kind of aware, like we kind of may have glitched him out a little bit. Because uh, we did make an awful lot of noise, so I'm not sure. Uh, don't worry too much about it because even if you do get a surprise attack, um, it's not going to insta kill him. It will actually only just take a little bit of damage off. Because even if he has only got one health bar, you can't insta kill him with the death blow from above. It'll take like maybe a quarter of his health or something like that. So uh, not a massive deal. It sucks that we just didn't do that correctly. But, uh, this ball is going to react exact same way as the ball at the very start of the game. Well, not the very start, but like just as soon as you come into Ashina Castle. And uh, as I was mentioning, I like to stay behind if possible. We don't have our revive up yet, so we better be really careful. And also, uh, firecrackers are really good, but they do have like a 15 to 20 second cooldown. Oh, come on, mate! Make sure you've always got full health on these type of enemies now. kind of hard to stay uh, right behind him, especially when it's like running around like this. Uh, you do have some grappling points around the map, as you can see just here. I'm not really sure what they're useful for exactly. Maybe dodging, I guess, but you know, I don't recommend uh, using them. I really recommend just trying to stay behind him. use any more firecrackers. This must be like one of the very few mini bosses I never try and like uh, parry or deflect. I'm pretty sure it's probably easy. Can we take damage even for... I, d I don't think we should be uh, discovering this right now to be honest. We should just be playing it safe. That actually fills his uh, posture bar up. So it's dead. And that we will give us a uh, prayer bead, I believe, and also uh, this. So that will allow us to have more total emblems. So 
I'm not sure if the total is now 18 or even 20 if we've done all the rest of the mini bosses. The total max in game is 20. I'm not sure if that's what gives us 20 or if we're still at 18. I believe it could be 20 already because we have done pretty much everything else. There's really not much left. Pick those items up over there and that one just there. We also got a Belgian coin purse from over there, so that's good. Uh, now we are done with this side of the bridge anyway. We've done everything possible and now it's time to try and go across the bridge. And this is where this area starts to get um, bloody difficult, let me tell you that. That is a nice scene. The, the Great Carp. We will be finishing off with the Great Carp and getting the uh, Defeat the Great Carp trophy. Though we already got the trophy and it won't pop, but you know what I mean. Uh, so I believe that's the only item there. Yeah, okay, we're good. We are good with that. Um, let's clear the bottom bit out first. I always do this. I always prefer to keep it in order. So there's going to be an item there. Um, I believe up here. Near the next waterfall. I'm, I'm going to be I'm skipping the enemies at the moment, but we will come back. Don't worry. I just want to pick up the items down bottom. Just to keep an order to the to it. I'm gonna clear the bottom first and then we'll take the top. Um, just watch out for these uh, electric dogs here. First waterfall check. Just gonna ignore those for now. Second waterfall. Uh, some dogs. Check. Two more items. Now we're gonna um, advance to the third waterfall. Oh, I believe I don't think there was an item down there. I could be wrong. Yeah, we'd pick that item up. Anyway. I'm gonna take care of this guy just so he doesn't interfere, because uh, there is gonna be a bit of a um, mini boss in a second. So I prefer if and there wasn't any interference. I'm never really sure what that um, what that attack is. What like what, what you're supposed to do. Now you can actually get a death blow on this Shichiman warrior, which is the mini boss I'm talking about. Watch out for the little dogs around here. Don't worry, I know we're getting a bit like lost, but um, we will head back to the bridge and we'll uh, now do the other half. But I just want to—I always—I don't know. It's just my personal uh, way. I prefer to go up top and then uh, go around bottom. Do we actually even have pacifying agent? We don't. Oh god. Okay, that could be an issue because uh, this is a shitty man warrior after all. I should be able to get a. Uh, Death blow. Let me find him. There is. I don't know how. You can get a death blow. I'm not sure why the game didn't give it to us. Uh, yeah, this could be impossible. Yeah, I think this is going to be impossible without pacifying. I can't believe we don't have pacifying agent. That's that's insane, actually. That is actually absolutely insane that we don't have pacifying agent. I mean, normally you're loaded with pacifying. Agent. I guess it's just because we kind of run through the um. We kind of just run through the uh, abandoned dungeons, and that's where you get the pacifying agent from. That kind of sucks. I don't know why it killed us so fast just now, by the way. I guess it just being around the um, little ball thingy, it gives us... Yeah, it definitely gives us terror just by being around it. That sucks. Yeah. If it wasn't for that, we could probably do this. And we're actually probably... We're still going to do a lot of it. Okay, um, we've got another life. That's cool. That's going to be tough, that's for sure. He, uh, on this one, he always does spawn in the two same places. So whenever he disappears, it's always that side, then that side. That's going to hit us. I'm actually surprised that didn't instantly uh, fill our uh, terror gauge up. Too. I really don't know why our terror gauge filled up like instantly at the start. Like, I thought it was just from being around these things, but it doesn't really seem like it now. If you do run fast enough, you can uh, catch him above before he actually does the attack. As soon as he spawns, just run. Sorry, as, uh, as soon as he disappears, just run to the other end and we'll get. Okay, that worked out. I'm not sure how we did that without pacifying agent. I really don't know what made our terror go up so fast. Lapis Lazuli. That is the most rare um, upgrade material in the game and that is one out of six that we can get from a single playthrough you can't farm it anywhere and if you want to get all the upgrades we will need a total of nine so you can't get them in single playthrough you can get six in a playthrough um we should be getting we, we should be showing you how to get all six 
so yeah um if you do want to get all upgrades in the trophy you will you will have to go into new game plus with that character and uh get four more four out of the six so we've got one out of six on them so now we've done like the bottom kind of area like below the big red kind of structure we're gonna head back to the idol just so you guys know exactly where we are and exactly what we're doing so we don't get in a mess this is the bridge that we just coming across I shouldn't have gone in the water because that mini boss is still alive. As you can see, there. Oh, holy god, it still hit me. <laughs> I thought he was going to fire it in the water. He won't fire at you unless you're in the water. But that's what I was talking about. That's the reason we shouldn't be in the water. Anyway, let's go to the top half of the map. There's really not many items on the top half. Uh, we've got some cool looking enemies. These guys with the, like, the football kind of thing, they're really cool. They've got some like Oliver and Benji kind of shit going on with their attack, it's amazing. Um, take those out. Uh, th like I said, there's not many items, but there is going to be an item on top of that one just there, I think. These guys do, like, they just annihilate you. Like, look at my health bar just explode. It is mental. And they're so hard to see when they're actually attacking you. This is brutal. Like, it really is. Insane. Probably some of the hardest enemies uh, in the game. Obviously once you get one on one and just start spamming at them, they're really weak. But if they're far away, it is ridiculous how much damage and stuff they do to you. I'm gonna go after the bow and arrow guy first. We already underestimated the bow and arrow guys enough on this um, video, I think. Take out this guy. This area can be really tough, so you know, be, try and be patient. Like I said, there's going to be an item on the roof up there if we can get there. I've got going to this roof. It's going to be on this little square roof. There we go. Gokin's sugar, and there's going to be an item. Okay, yeah. There's going to be an item across there. Didn't really want to fall all the way down, but um, like I said, uh, there's no more items down on this big platform you can go and take those enemies out but like I said there's no items so there's not really any point so to get across we are gonna have to go up the rooftops up this rooftop I oh no you don't have to go up the rooftops actually oh yeah and that item you get later on I, I was getting a bit confused myself there uh, what we want to do we don't have to get on the rooftops but we do want to be up here I'm going to go to where the bow and arrow guy was and we're going to jump through this waterfall and uh, do a bit of platforming up here. Now from this platform, is it this platform? No, sorry, I think it's the next, no, further up, my bad. Um, now this door is going to be locked, there's actually a shortcut from the other side. But what we're going to do from here is take a left and from here we are going to jump and grapple onto this uh, little secret kind of area. And uh, here we are going to come across another idol, uh, one item, I believe there's one item around here in this building probably, yep, here we go. To find confetti, an idol, and another um, noble, uh, pot noble. Purchase item of scales. So interestingly, we have um, the left mask frag um, fragment. Remember, we was looking for the final one. This is the final fragment. So though we're not going to buy it in this detailed walkthrough, we now know where all three of them are. And when you get all three, you will have access to the mask. And with the mask, you can trade five skill points for one attack power. So it's an amazing item. You can get infinite well, not infinite, the maximum is actually 98 attack power. Obviously, that's a lot of ridiculous amount of farming. So we've got the left fr fragment here. We've got the right fragment in the other pot noble in Hidata. And we've got the middle part um, from the merchant in the abandoned dungeon entrance. So what we're actually going to do is buy two lapis lazuli, which are 12, uh, six each. And that, makes, that means we've got three out of six, okay? That's really what I wanted to show you. But the mask is extremely important as well. And to be honest, if I did have more um, carp scales, I would buy them. You can get enough in one playthrough. You can actually get 42 scales in one playthrough. I just wanted to show you where all three of the masks um, are. So anyway, let's, uh, let's head back through the cave that we just came from. I should be able to grapple up 
again to the exact same cave. Go back. Um, we are going to be doing a bit of a side quest where that pot noble will actually die. But don't worry, his um, all his stock will go to the other one. Okay, so even when he dies, you can still get the mask fragment. You can still get the lapis lazuli. You just have to buy it from the from the other pot noble. The amount of times I'm about to say pot noodle is insane. That's all I can think of when I say pot noble is pot noodle. I swear to God, they did it on purpose. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to come through here. I'm actually just going to ignore all these enemies because uh, we actually want to rest at... I, there could have been an item in that building at the top. I'm not 100% sure. I just want to make sure I rest at this place. It may not actually let me. No, it didn't let me. It doesn't normally let you. Which kind of sucks. I, now, now it didn't let me. Like, I'm being honest. I'm not taking out all these enemies because it would just make the episode insanely long. And uh, I think this one's already going to be long enough as it is. I'm kind of just really curious if there was an item in that building. I kind of re recognize there being an item in that building at the top. I don't think so, but I just, it's, you know, it's one of those feelings. So I'm going to go back up. I know I said not to waste time, but I, I always need to make sure about these things. Because uh, since we started this detailed walkthrough, I've literally been doing it all by my head. I've literally not... Um... Okay, no, there's not. Okay, I just need to make sure that there's no way in there. Like, I've not got any notes written down. I'm just remembering everything, all the items. So, you know, I just kind of need to make sure. Right, so this is time to now take out the guy that has been bothering us if you wanted to jump in the water. And so, once you get to him, he's just as easy as pretty much any of the other guys. But, um, getting to him can be a pain depending on what attacks he does. The best thing is just to go at him, you know, as fast as possible. Prayer bead from him, because he was technically a mini boss. Right, now, huh, interesting. So. Now we have the big massive water and underwater area to explore. So let me just think what order I'm going to do this in. First I'm going to do one little thing just to clear out the enemies underwater more than anything. And since we don't have pacifying agent, this could be a big hassle. And yes, I think you know what's coming. I'm going to jump up because I need to use divine confetti. You know what's coming. Another headless. And this headless actually is two headless. It's kind of a headless and a, and a ghost headless at the same time. And it's really annoying. Where is he? Can I see him? There he is. That uh, ghost figure to the left is actually another headless. If you kill this one, the other guy will disappear. So uh, don't bother going after the other one. Uh, it's going to be pretty tough. Like, let me tell you, it's going to be pretty damn tough without, um, without a uh, pacifying agent. I'm not even sure how possible this is going to be without Pacifying Agent, to be perfectly honest. But um, let's just let's just give it a few tries. Just like the other um, underwater one, hit a few and then dodge. Oh no, we got caught in his uh, black hole attack. Luckily that attack doesn't actually give us terrorists. Like, it's more of a terror issue more than um, anything else. He's actually quite close to dying though. Like, his health is pretty low. So don't let him hit you more than once. I'm just kind of worried that my divine confetti is going to run out more than anything. Yeah, my divine. Oh, we got him anyway. Okay. That is him gone. Now, when you kill him, you'll get the final spirit fall. So that's five of five. Um, headless, and obviously the other guy will die. Uh, I guess now we're here. We'll just do the underwater items first. So we've got a load of carp scales here. Uh, in here we... is this another bead? I really can't remember what this is. Could be a bead though. Yeah, prayer bead. Okay, cool. Uh, I think we've actually... like that is our first bead for the final necklace if I'm not mistaken. So that's great. Precious bait. Um, I'm just trying to remember all, where all the underwater items are. There's one here. There's also going to be a ton of... Um, uh, carp, like proper carps that you can kill and get scales from under here. I would say at least five, maybe even six. I'm not sure. There's one just there. It's going to be an item just here. Precious bait. Um, I'm just trying to remember. There's going to be 
I'm gonna, like before we go to the left, I'm gonna go over here to the right. There's one to the right somewhere around here, probably a bit lower down on the next platform. There it is. Pick that up, and there's gonna be a few more over here if I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to remember everything. Luckily I have played through the game like seven times, so I'm trying my best to remember what every single thing is. Hopefully I don't screw up. Um, as for underwater, there is going to be one or two more over the other side. It's kind of annoying to do it this slow. Uh, we'll pick this one up. Oh, like This one's not underwater, but we'll pick this one up. Just watch out for that uh, that noble over there. He could, if he does the... um insta kind of old man effect when you're in the water that is an insta kill so uh you'll just automatically drown so watch out for that there be more carps over here uh, i believe there's at least yeah there's definitely a few more items around here there's definitely like three more scales and something else yeah there's going to be one at the top of this building outside the water lump of grave wax and I believe the other items are in this building underwater. There we go. I think these are all carp scales. We could probably actually have enough carp scales to uh, buy at least one of the masks. But um, we're not going to be using it anyway. And there's going to be two more items underwater. One of them is going to be here. I know this is probably a bit confusing. But, um, you know, don't have time to do or explain everything. And now we're going to go into this cave, and what we're going to do is uh, just stick to the bottom. Um, this is going to be like the home of the great carp, so we don't really want to mess with him. I think there's going to be one, or even, no, I think it's two items down here. One's going to be just there, and the other one's going to be a bit further up. But you can get both of them by just sticking to the bottom. And plus, the carp can't really get you when you're sticking to the bottom. So it's a win-win situation. Now from here, now we're coming up, we do want to do this as fast as possible. We just want to get into the hole in this building. And uh, we are now safe from the carp. Now we will we will be killing the carp, but we don't physically fight him. It's more of a side quest, okay. And uh, we are free from that. And we are going to come up to another idol right here. Right. What is next? Before fighting the boss, uh, we do have enough prayer beads for this. Before fighting the boss, what we're going to do is do the uh, side quest for the carp. Watch out for these guys. These guys are pretty much just feasting, so they're not even really going to bother you. So it's completely up to you. You can just leave them if you want. Uh, so this big door here will be um, the shortcut back to... Uh, the main area, which we discovered from the other side. Now through here, I believe this should be our last uh, seed to get us to have 10, um, 10 heals. That is our final seed right there. So that's all of the heals possible in the game. Uh, in Through here, uh, before doing anything, we're just going to hop down and pick up this item just here. I'm just trying to see, like, we're only missing three beads for our tenth and final um, necklace. I'm just trying to think what three they are. I don't think we've missed anything. We shouldn't have. Oh, uh, we've got one, two. I can think of two of them. No, okay, yeah, we're, we're cool. I, I remember all three uh, beads, what we're we missing, so we're good with that. So that means we haven't missed any mini bosses at all. If you've followed this guide. Right, so from this roof, we are going to jump as far left as possible and try and grapple onto this tree. Now we're going to fall towards this roof and then grapple and uh, then grapple towards this roof just here. And from here, if this guy will let us, we are going to... Where do we want to go? Yeah, we want to just jump down and uh, watch and just get to this idol before anything else happens, really. Okay, cool. Um, let me just, before starting the side quest about the uh, giant carp, let's just pick up the few items that are around here. So there's going to be one up here. And I believe there's going to be one the other side of the big building over here. And there's going to be one at the end of the bridge, actually. This is also a pretty decent farming spot if you feel 
Like, oh, maybe there's not. I'm sure there's one around here. There's definitely at least one more item around here. Or maybe the item I am thinking about is the one on the bridge. Hmm. Can we grapple up? Maybe it's on the roof. Or maybe it's on this piece of dirt. See, this is where I start to get paranoid. I could have sworn there's another item. But uh, it could have been the one on the bridge that I'm thinking about. I'm just going to go up here. Just to make sure. Dog's here. Uh, maybe it was the one on the bridge. I could have been thinking the one on the bridge. Unless it's up in the building where the enemies are. I don't know. I think we're okay. Like, I'm not sure. Maybe there's not any items. Maybe I'm just getting paranoid and it's the one on the bridge. Whatever, even if there is, it's nothing too important. But, um, whatever. Uh, like I said, this is another really good uh, farming space if you do feel a bit lazy and you don't really want to press many buttons. Uh, you just rest at the idle, backstab that guy, rest at the idle, backstab that guy, and that's pretty decent. Alright, so this guy will explain about the feeding grounds. Uh, if we want to feed the carp, we just call the bell and whatnot. So now we kind of have a method of killing him, since we know that we can feed him. So what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way back to Hidata Estate and go and talk to the pot noble because uh, he kind of wanted to become a carp king and over here carp king simply means the giant carp and he is actually going to help us kill it so um yeah remember after killing the great carp uh the other pot noble in fountainhead will like a lot of people i'm not even sure like if he actually completely dies there was something that i never did check but we'll get back to that some people say he dies, some people say he. you can actually talk to him in the water below where the pot noble was, but I believe if you do this he does die and you can't talk to him anymore. But if you if he does die, um, just, you, you get his stock here. Um, anyway, what do we want from this guy? So, you, you actually have to spend seven scales for this to happen. You have to um, spend seven scales. Once you spend seven scales, talk to him. And then leave. And then maybe talk to him again, I guess. No, wait, wait, mate, um, is there something I'm missing? No, okay. Yeah, uh, that was weird. He didn't, it took so long. Uh, we just had to talk to him again. That was really weird. I didn't, I didn't know why that happened. But yeah, whatever. We'll get the truly precious um, bait. So we're going to take that. And uh, obviously this is poison. So we can tell, kind of tell what we're going to do with this. We are going to go to the feeding ground and, um, well, feed it to him. And that would technically kill the uh, great carp. But we then do have to go and find the body, and we'll be getting to that in a second. And by doing this, uh, we will be rewarded um, another Lapis Lathuli. So that makes four out of six. But, um, yeah, just we need to travel back to Fountainhead and feeding grounds. This is definitely going to be the longest episode. I believe it is probably already over an hour easily. Um, so, like the last episode should be really short. This is definitely the longest one, mainly because we're sorting so many other things out as well. Like before we even started Fountainhead, we went to kill the two bosses, then the headless, and just needed to sort everything out. So now we've got it. We want to ring the bell. And now we choose what we want to feed him. Remember, if you um, we have uh, picked our precious bait up, uh, don't want to do that. We want to select truly precious bait, and now we want to use it. And there we go. That is him fed, and he will now die. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to travel to the Guardian Apes watering hole. Remember how when we dived down in the Guardian Apes little watering hole there was like a tiny bit of water we could go underneath uh, There was like structures destroyed and it looked very similar to the ones in Fountainhead I'm not sure if it has like some direct connection underwater But by the looks of things it does because this is actually where we're gonna uh, Find the dead body of the carp Great white whiskers And that is um 
Uh, that is what it, do we have to give this to I, i'm kind of having a bit of a confusing moment here do we have to give that to the pot noble or do we give that to the to the guy at the feeding grounds i actually can't remember i think it's the pot noble i'm sorry about this it's kind of one of those moments where you really can't remember just one little detail i think you give it to the pot noble because this is kind of what actually makes him transform into a carp I'm 99% sure anyway. Maybe we have to give it to the um, guy at the feeding grounds. I don't think so. I think we have to give it to the pot mill. So uh, let's quickly undo that. I could be wrong. No, oh, no. Okay, he is now a carp. Actually, I don't really think you have to give in the fish whiskers to anybody. Or do you? I'm not even sure anymore. I'm getting really confused about this. Uh, this is technically the end of the side quest. We got a lapis lazuli, which is what we wanted. Um, yeah, okay, so we have, I think, yeah, no way. Uh, we, I mean, it's not a waste of time because we wanted to come there anyway just to get a Lapis Lathily. Uh, and now if you, if you want to buy anything from the other Pot Noble, uh, that guy will have his stock. So, yeah. Uh, good, good, good. Um, so let's go and actually finish the quest properly, completely. I mean, the reward is the Lapis Lathily, but, uh, we may as well go and completely finish it by going to the feeding grounds and showing the whiskers or whatever to the um to the guy which was uh, obviously uh, supposed to be looking after the fish himself <laughs> oh damn i'm not even sure how long this episode is way over an hour easily we are coming to an end kind of though right so let's talk to him Give, okay, yeah, we do give it to this guy. Right now, um, technically, let's just see. Um, do we have? I'm not sure we have to travel if it's just rest. Yeah, okay, it's just rest. Now he will actually be dead, and uh, we will get another five scales. And her, his daughter is here, which is actually the uh, NPC from before. I only just realised that. I would like to get the scales. Oh right, we just absorbed them. Okay, so yeah, we get um four scales. Sorry, not five. But that would mark the end of that quest. So now it is, if I'm not mistaken, time. I'm just trying to make sure we haven't missed anything. It's time to go after the boss. Now, this is not the final boss of the game, but, you know, I just need to make sure. I mean, we can technically come back if we want, so we're going to go to the palace ground. I'm just going to be thinking in the back of my head uh, if we actually are uh, supposed to do something else. I mean, I think we're good. I mean, we've got all the beads. All the gourds so far, we're only missing three, or all the uh, beads, sorry, let's start again. We've got all the seeds, we've got all the beads so far, we're only missing three, and I know what three we're missing, so we're doing good on that. Uh, we've got four of the six lapis lathuli, which I know where the other two are, we can't get those yet. Um, yeah, I think, I'd, I'd say we're good. All NPCs are done, completely. Um, except the tiny little Anayama bit that we can't do yet. Uh, there's one item around here actually, so make sure you don't miss that. Uh, so we are good. We are we are doing the hundred percent. I would say killed all five headless, all the mini bosses so far. All right, let's pray at this stone and fight, which is, in my opinion, the coolest looking boss and near enough any game I've ever played. Actually, this boss is absolutely stunning. Not this guy. <laughs> this is the first phase. Let's just call it. These guys aren't what I would call stunning. Uh, and this is a very easy boss. This is trick boss. Um, so I really wouldn't worry about it. You don't really need to even prepare for it as long as you know how to kill. Uh, what you want to watch out is the uh, trees that come out. And once they are out, you want to grapple. And then you want to get a death blow on any one of them. And this will pretty much wipe out the whole lot. As you can see, that killed pretty much all of them. You can normally get at least, um, I think the tree only goes away if they all die. But the tree will go away and uh, we'll have to do it. Well, you don't have to do it like that. To be honest, the first time I actually killed this boss I didn't know you could do that. Uh, it ju I just killed them all individually. They all share the same health, health bar, so uh, eventually. 
Uh, the darker ones you can't, like, you can kill, but they won't count towards the boss's health bar, so there's no point of really wasting time. So, uh, tree, death blow, bang. Tree. And, uh, can we get a death blow for you? Um, no, I think even if you get a death blow on the darker ones, you can. That was a disaster, wasn't it? Jesus Christ. There's so many of them, yet we can't get a goddamn. Oh my god. Can I just lock onto one? Thank you. Even if you do the death blow on the dark ones, they will still do like uh, they will still do like the same attack. So just as good. Yeah, he's nearly dead. All right now onto the main phase. I am skipping the cutscenes, but you know I just don't want the game to be massively long or this sub uh, video. So this is the divine dragon. It is absolutely stunning. So really, all you, this is a trick boss, and it's really easy. It's either jump or run to the sliders, run to the side, and then after his attack, grapple onto a tree that's got lightning, and then press R1. That's it. Just make sure you do the attacks are at the end after his third, either or if it's an overhead attack, is after the third one, and if it's a jump attack, is after the second one. If you can't do it, then just wait for the next one because you don't want to get hit in midair. Trust me. Second one will do it because it's the jump or jump over one, and really it's as easy as that. When he's on his last hit, he will go kind of berserk and do a few other attacks as well. But for the most part, it's literally just that. Just uh, don't grab onto a tree that's not got lightning on top of it. If not, it won't do anything. So. I'd like to grapple onto that one. I'm not sure if we did that fast enough. Are we gonna get hit? No, okay, just about. Don't leave it too long. Just if, if none of the trees have light, then just wait. And eventually one of them should get uh, light now. There we go, that one. So if it's a jump attack twice, grapple. And bam. Okay, now when the trees disappear, this is kind of his last kind of berserk mode, and it will just do a load of different um, diagonal and uh, horizontal attacks. So you know, just watch out. For the most part, just run to the side, and then if if you see his sword go across uh, horizontally, um, just jump. He will do one where it's like jump and then dodge and then jump, and he kind of goes all over the place, which I always get hit by, to be honest. But it shouldn't be enough to kill, especially if you got this much health. It's this one. The one that looks like a poke. You want to... Yeah, I, I always get confused. It's just a big load of jump, dodge, jump, dodge. But like I said, it shouldn't be good enough to kill it. Right now you want to look for the tree with the big Sakura kind of thing. And go up. And this is the final hit. Make sure you're locked onto him. And when he's right in your face, press the R1 button. And that is GG. Now you just want to run up his sword. And get the dragon tears. And this is actually the item that you have to give Kudo at the end. Not only for the normal ending, but for any ending. So for the normal ending you would just give him the dragon tears. For the return ending you would give him the dragon tears plus the frozen tears that we got from the divine child. And for the res not, uh, not re resurrection, I always say that. For the purification ending you'll give him the uh, uh i can't remember the branch plus the tears so you basically need the tears but basically now with this item we officially can get any of the free endings we want at the end of the game excluding the bad one obviously which we could have got before and uh yeah i think that's going to be the end of this episode it's definitely a long episode but uh we got a lot out of the way let's just say just gonna make sure that we are uh, not forgetting anything, but yeah, we should be good. It's an awfully long loading screen that I clearly don't remember existing. I mean, technically now we could go and finish the game. We are at, now at the top of Ashina Castle. We've got the Dragon Tears, we've got the Memory. Uh, let's just leave it here. Like, I'm not gonna talk to Emma or anything. Let's just absolutely leave it here. Enhanced attack power from the Memory. And, um... Enhanced physical, no we can't do that yet, okay, okay we're cool, 
So yeah guys, hopefully this video was helpful. Remember if you do have any questions, just leave them down below. If I did happen to miss something, also let me know. So hopefully this was helpful guys. If it was, please go like and subscribe and see you next time. If this guide was helpful, please consider joining as a member by using the join button or using the link in the description. This will support the channel, allowing me to get even more games to do, even more video guides. Thanks for the support. Take care, guys.